So I want you to hop in the Helldivers way back machine, travel back in time, just about two months ago to that railgun patch. And then I want you to multiply the amount of significant changes that patch had in it by about tenfold. And you arrive at today's biggest ever list of changes we've ever seen. Welcome to the channel, it's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and there's so much here to break down. And for some of you, you're going to see tons of positives to your chosen weapons and gear, while others, well, there are a handful of nerfs here as well. But don't worry, I've got you covered with a full recap. But before we begin, remember to hit subscribe and ring that notifications bell to receive my daily upload alerts. And let's check out this wall of changes going live today with Helldivers. All right, sticking to the usual format, there is a new Superstore reset here, new for time frame, not for wares, but for the next 48 hours or so, we've got the CE81 Juggernaut medium body armor with engineering kit, for reduced recoil and plus two grenades holding capacity, the matching CE81 Juggernaut helmet, the FS-34 Exterminator, AKA Kylo Ren helmet, and the FS-34 Exterminator medium body armor with fortified for reduced recoil and 50% resistance to explosive damage. Also, I forgot to mention this first, but I always try to include chapters in my videos so you can skip around, you can repeat sections, do whatever you need to do just to get all the info. It's all there, it's up to you. Anyways, checking in on the major order and it's nearly over and it's probably gonna be over once this video posts. At this point, we've taken Lasoth and Penta and are currently split between Chort Bay and Menkent both with very few divers on them. And this means because of FTL supply lines, think of those as invisible connecting lines, we have not reached Chuhei, and have not, at least at this time, unlocked the anti-tank mines. And finally, for 15 medals, today's daily is to get 40 kills with the Eagle Cluster Bomb. Bots or bugs? Yeah, this one's pretty straightforward. Other than that, I've already checked out the Super Destroyer. We have no hidden stratagems, no stealth ship upgrades, and other than the devs changing around the way the weapons are categorized in our armories, nothing of note has happened there. Also, if the new major order happens to go live while I'm recording this, I will add it on late in this video, and it will of course have a timestamp and chapter, so you can skip to that as well. With all of that out of the way, who's ready to play Helldiver update? Bingo! And I found this over on the Helldiver Reddit with over 16,000 upvotes, and all it has on it is nerfs, along with a clip from community manager Spitz. 24 different weapons and stratagems are being tweaked, along with an anxious face emoji. Which, who knows, is this appropriate as we now jump into today's changes? Let's find out. Now in terms of size, for me on PC, update 1.000.300 was nearly three quarters of a gig in size, and it took a bit to unpack and update the entire game, and since I don't play on PS5, I don't know, maybe someone can post a patch size for that platform in the comment section below, and please and thank you. Now for general balancing changes, there are two here, which include a change to armors with a rating over 100, so they will now also reduce damage on headshots, and I know that little splash there doesn't have a lot of fanfare to it, but that's huge because for anyone out there wearing medium armor with fortified or maybe you were wearing heavy armor and you took a headshot, you would just get one tapped and you didn't understand why. That is the reason why. So that's been reduced. That is a big change there. Also, victory poses, you know, those emotes to play when we extract and are back up on the ship. Well, now only players that have successfully extracted will strike a pose. And the notes say here, no stolen valor on my ship. <laughs> okay. Now over to primary, secondary support weapons and stratagems. And there are 25 individual changes spread across all of these categories. And let's start off a little bit out of sequence here with the strats. Now the machine gun sentry now has increased health 
to make it. Like the other centuries, the Tesla Tower sees much the same, getting a massive 33% health increase and the RL-77 rocket launcher, aka the Team Killer, saw a host of changes to its firing mechanics. It no longer detonates when shot near other stratagems like turrets, resupplies, and of course, other hell divers, which is fabulous news indeed. It has also received a reduced proximity radius, which, if I'm reading this right, means a smaller area where it perceives a threat and detonates based on the alert. Hopefully, I have that one correct, although I could absolutely be wrong. And now over to the weapons, and here comes the damage, so to speak, starting off with a scarcely picked crossbow hmm, okay lots of changes here smaller explosions increased stagger number of mags cut by four from 12 down to eight so less overall ammo although increased the number of mags received at resupply from six up to eight reduction in ergonomics aka weapon handling and finally muzzle velocity increased so i guess we have less of an elliptical path to target Hmm. I honestly don't see many players using the crossbow, but if you do like to main the bow, let me know how you feel about these changes overall. Next up is a monstrous change to the Quasar Cannon, aka the Queso Cannon. It's now had an increased recharge time by a further five seconds. Wow, that is huge, especially on Helldive difficulty when you're being swarmed by Bile Titans left, right, and center. I mean, one second is critical in a situation like that, but now five? I switched between the recoilless EATs and the Quasar, and it might be time to invest more time into those EATs. Still, what is that, a near doubling of the cooldown timer? I don't know. I'm not on board with that one. I agree it needed to change, but to nearly double the cooldown timers, I, I don't know. I just don't agree with that. Okay, moving on, and next up is the Adjudicator Rifle. What's that? You've never heard of the Adjudicator? Well, it is in the game, and by the way, I was only kidding there, but seriously, almost nobody used this weapon due to the past version, which was plagued by low base damage, low ammo, and massive recoil. Well, today's changes include moving it into the Assault Rifle category, which it was supposed to be from the very start, Full Auto is now the default fire mode, reduced recoil, no percentages listed here, increased max mags from 6 up to 8, alright, so now we get more ammo, and increased number of mags at resupply from 6 up to 8. So overall the recoil has been reduced, and I'm going to need some time to test this one out, especially because I did not like that early version of the Adjudicator, but as far as the AR category, it would have a high base damage number to begin with. So. This might be an absolutely beast of a weapon. Again, I'm gonna have to test it out. Up next is the laser cannon, which gets slightly increased damage and less damage versus large volume bodies. I assume that is for things like the bile spewers, like that big sack on their back. So that's a buff and a smallish nerf all in one for the LC. The Punisher Plasma received much the same treatment here, less mags from 12 down to 8, increased resupply of mags from 6 up to 8, increased projectile speed but similar range as before, decreased damage falloff on the explosions as well. So it picks up some strength there and it's now placed into the energy weapons category as well. So overall, less ammo, more velocity, less explosion damage falloff, and maybe we call this a push over to the positives, which outweigh the negatives here on the Punisher Plasma. The ARC-12 Blitzer, yeah, another totally forgotten weapon here, received a hefty shots per minute increase from 30 up to 45, and it has also been placed into the energy weapons category. I mean, this thing was dreadful before, and I see the fire rate, but nothing else here, so I'm going to need to test this one out, but I still don't see the ARC-12 Blitzer making its way into my chosen Battlefield loadout. All right, let's talk the Eruptor. Anytime I see the Eruptor, I get worried. Decreased number of available mags by half, 12 down to six, and explosion damage drops off even faster. Hmm. When I do use the Eruptor, it's a ton of fun, but less ammo and even faster damage drop off for explosions. Again, I'm gonna need to test it all out, but it looks like the Eruptor got dropped down a few pegs. 
Laser weapons are next. So the sickle has had its available mags, or should I say heat sinks, reduced from six down to three. And the Sith has picked up, what, 50 damage from 300 up to 350, along with reduced mags or heat sinks as well from six down to four. And yeah, I guess that's the overall theme for this patch, isn't it? Less ammo, less mags, and more about being precise with shots and overall conserving ammo. Well, look at here. The railgun is also here with a buff. Well, look at this. Increased armor pin in both safe and unsafe mode. By the way, no percentages listed anywhere here. It could be minuscule, I couldn't tell you, as well as stagger force also being reduced here. So perhaps the previous railgun changes were a bit too severe, and now Arrowhead is bringing it back slightly. Again, thorough testing needed here, but slightly positive news overall for the railgun. And a little bit of rapid fire here, but the MG-101 heavy machine gun now has a crosshair in third person. Yes, which means I may actually start using this thing. The Diligence CS picked up damage from 128 up to 140, along with improved ergonomics. The Diligence, just the base Diligence, also picked up damage from 112 to 125. And the P-19 Redeemer picked up a bit more recoil. Sticking with the sidearms, the Peacemaker picked up 15 damage from 60 to 75, as well as the hard-hitting Senator, increasing from 150 up to 175 damage along, listen to this, with a speed loader reload when reloading from an empty cylinder. And I love to see both these changes for the Senator. I'm actually using this thing quite a bit as of recent, and a damage buff and reload buff from empty were both badly needed. I can't wait to try this one out. The Dagger picks up a big damage buff from 150 up to 200. The Liberator goes from 55 to 60 damage, so a little minuscule buff there. The Liberator Concussive also goes from 55 up to 65 damage. And the Dominator decreases from 300 down to 275 damage. Also, and listen to this because these are big changes, the Guard Dog Rover. So that's the laser version has had its damage decreased by a whopping 30%, which is a massive change, while the AR variant, the standard guard dog, has picked up slightly more damage. Again, no percentages listed here, and I always pick the rover on bug missions to thin out the herds, especially because there are just so many damn targets, and a 30% nerf is a tremendous reduction to that piece of gear. And finally, check this one out, burning damage, I assume that is to us hell divers, has also been reduced by 15%. And that's going to finish it up for the weapon changes alone, but now over to the enemies, and the speed of bile spewers and nursing spewers have been slightly reduced overall. I mean, these things were always pretty quick, especially for their size, so yeah, I guess that's a good change, although no mention of just how strong bile itself is versus Helldivers. The force required to stagger hulks has also been increased, so we now need to hit them with even more force to get them staggered in place. Flamethrower, direct damage from hulks, this is big, versus divers now reduced by 20%, which along with that earlier 15% reduction to fire damage should keep us alive for more than a tenth of a second versus one of those hulks. Devastator fire rate for the standard variants has been increased, so not those awful rocket or heavy versions just the standard foot soldier guys gunships sideways strafe has been reduced okay scout strider drivers now less vulnerable to explosions fog generator health hmm and armor increased i'm gonna take a guess and i believe this is for the spore spewers so they become even tougher much like that of the shrieker nest so it's gonna take multiple shots to down them and finally gunship factories no now have a lower cap on how many active gunships they can have active at the same time shame on you arrowhead i love that one because it would just be so damn chaotic when you'd have a fleet of these things up in the air all right, we've got some big changes here for enemy patrols, especially for you solo players. So listen up. If your group has less than four players, expect more patrols to be active on the map at the same time. The fewer the players, the bigger the noticeable change. Now for four players, expect no changes to enemy patrols. And clearly, this is going to try to make solo hell dives even that more difficult. 
There's also quite a few gameplay changes here, starting off with level generation and how the objectives are placed around the map, because right now there's a ton of downtime and yeah, running. And this change should place objectives closer together and keep us engaged for longer. Overall, I do like that change. Also, auto climbing and vaulting now has a setting in the gameplay section to toggle it on and off. And hmm, the only problem I think we have with this mechanic is the climbing of the resupply boxes. Other than that, I want this thing on. The raise the flag missions will now appear at higher difficulties. By the way, big W there. That's a fun mission. When you are ready in the pre-drop mission screens, your Helldiver will now salute. Oh, hell yes. Trimmer planetary hazards now have added ambience. Who in the hell knows what that means? And finally, and pay close attention to this one, ricochets from Helldivers versus heavily armored enemies will now properly reflect back and hit the Helldiver who fired them instead of flying off at an angle or maybe hitting another Helldiver, which could lead to a bunch of unexpected deaths. So trigger discipline here is now mandatory. Oh, and also the explosion damage and how it would pull you towards targets has now been reversed. So it now pushes you away from targets. I know, I know this goes on for a while, but we are nearly there. Just stick with me a few more minutes. There's a ton of fixes packed into this patch as well, and I'm not going to read them all out here for you verbatim. Instead, check out the screen right now, but here are a few highlights. First off, the superior packing methodology upgrade is now fixed. Exosuits received some fixes. Blast absorption ship modules now working. Consuming ammo on canceled reloads has been fixed for various weapons. Weapons not being able to shoot through foliage is also now fixed. Hell bombs not being able to be deployed on various missions. I'm hoping that's fixed completely, especially the bouncing effect for this. It's not mentioned here, but hopefully that's been fixed. And sadly, using the rock, paper, scissors emote by the front glass of your super destroyer no longer allows you to manually deploy down to the planet. Again, these are just a few changes listed out in here, and I don't see anything about the spear lock-on changes the devs teased last week. Maybe it's later on in these patch notes. Known issues are the final portion here. Again, check up on screen, but damage over time is apparently going to be handled in the next patch. Hallelujah. We've got scopes, arc weapon misfires, and damn, there it is. Spear targeting still remain on the known issues board. And per usual, those pesky friends list issues still remain intact. And I say this every patch update video, but being able to easily squat up in a co-op shooter is kind of pivotal to a solid gameplay experience and this has been busted ever since launch and here it is something in the back of my mind said check the live game one last time before you push this massive update video live and here we go because arrowhead has surprised us once more this is the new major order hot off the helldiver hq airwaves it says operation legitimate undertaking terminated emergency situation in terminated quarantine zone several weeks ago the hell divers activated the terminated control system the tcs on the barrier planets by the way i love that mission type errata prime finrear 3 meridia and touring now since then the terminated produced by the tcs has kept the terminates at bay however the tcs is no longer functioning as intended terminated outbreaks have erupted on all barrier planets that should be four of them the bugs are displaying resistance to termicide something our top scientists previously believed impossible i bet you they're all going to be terminated <laughs> the situation on meridia is even worse though their terminated reproduction rates have exploded overnight and continue to increase exponentially the planet is already almost fully infested. While the exact mechanism for the hyper reproductive adaptation is unknown, it appears to be linked to continued termicide exposure. So far, this effect is limited to Meridia. It cannot be allowed to spread. Operation Legitimate Undertaking has been placed on indefinite hiatus. That means they're pulling us out of Botsville and they're moving us over to Bugsville. Meridia is unsalvageable. The Helldivers are ordered to deactivate the TCS on the remaining barrier planets immediately. All right, let's check this thing out. And here is the barrier planets, by the way. I like that new symbol on there. It says new major order. This is a six day major order worth 50 medals we need to deactivate the tcs on errata prime finrear 3 and 
touring. By the way, we cannot access Meridia right now. It's sitting at about 50% liberated. Also, let's check out if there's any specific kind of missions tied to this new deactivation of the TCS. Let me hop onto a specific planet and let's check it out. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. My suspicions were correct. There it is. Mission deactivate terminated control systems. This is a 12 minute mission. I guess we have to go in there basically on these blitz missions. Not only do we have to eradicate the bugs, but we have to deactivate this uh, TCS dispersion tower is what they call it there. So yeah, hell divers, six day major order, 50 medals, three planets. We've got to now go in there and deactivate the TCS on these 12 minute eradicate missions. All right, there you go. Pretty much everything you ever wanted or needed to know about this Mega Helldivers patch. Remember to hit subscribe and ring that notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. All my socials can be found in the video description, including an open invite link to my fast-growing Helldiver Discord community, now 7K members strong. Shout out to the nearly 220,000 of you legends out there for sticking with me and hitting subscribe. Until the next one, this is... Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off. <laughs>